Hello, welcome to my series about all Chopin's music. Today we will talk about Etude in F major, opus 25, number 3. Um, so, after two first etudes, uh, both of them rather uh, soft, rather poetic, romantic, um, very, you know, silent, we can say, unreal, suddenly we are put back to reality by Chopin. Um, even Robert Schumann didn't really enjoy this etude so much. Uh, he, he wrote, well, I mean, he, he appreciated it, but he wrote it's rather, uh, well, I, I don't remember, he called it aggressive or he called it um, a brave or something like this. But uh, anyway, the character of this etude is very different very different. If we listen to the whole Opus 25, uh, we are dreaming in w while listening number one, number two, and we are brutally uh, uh, woken up while listening to uh, number three. Okay, but what are difficulties? What is this exercise for? What does it improve? Frankly, the whole etude is built on one only motif. Only one very short, like an extremely short brick. And there is nothing else but only this kind of motif. And that's, that's for Chopin. It's not usual for Chopin. It's a new thing for Chopin. He is trying, he is experimenting. Um, and also in this etude, he experiments with the structure. We are going to talk about it also during this video. So uh, stay with me because this video is going to be very, very exciting. At least that's my plan, because so is the music. So once again, the first motif, and that's all. And then this motif is repeated, 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 repeated obsessively throughout all the etude. And Chopin is making phrases, he is constructing phrases out of this small little motif. And even the melody, it is fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Okay, but what's difficult? Well, there are quite, quite a lot of difficulties here, but mostly I call this etude an etude for wrist. We must have a supple, uh, flexible wrist that is cooperating with fingers when we play this motif. And now I show you, uh, of course, from close-up, what exactly Chopin had in mind. Okay, the left hand has to play the, this kind of uh, movement of the wrist. So from, like from down to here, a little different, but still we cannot have a stiff wrist. If we have a stiff wrist, it's extremely hard to play. So, In a slower tempo. Okay, what about the right hand? The same, look. Okay, let's, let's just look at my wrist. So that's the technique. And if I use it all throughout all the etude, you know, um, then this etude becomes relatively easy. If we have the supple and uh, loose wrist and or the whole hand, then we don't feel pain because now imagine you have to repeat this for whew, how many? 65, 
67, 66, at least 66 times, or even more, 69, 68, 68, yes. And, uh, well, if I have a calculator, I can immediately tell you how many. Uh, six, let's say 68. Um, so 204 times we have this motif in this etude, at least in the right hand and 204 in the left hand. But this is like together. If we use this all the time, we don't feel pain. And we can play this etude because we use only one kind of technique. But it's extremely useful for, especially for pianists who have stiff wrist. If the student has stiff wrist, wrist, it's a very good attitude to give it to him because then he can learn how to relax this wrist. So I strongly recommend it to everybody who has this problem. Uh, and now let's go to the uh, analysis of music and of the structure because as I told you and I promised you uh, this will be the most exciting part of this video. First of all, let's listen to the first musical period. Let's call it um, the first uh, musical period. <laughs> or we can call it also, <laughs> excuse me, we can call it part A as well. Okay, so let's listen. <laughs> Uh, antecedent phrase and then we have a uh, consequent so once again the first phrase and then the second one more time slower exciting and fantastic uh, thing that Chopin creates here. Can you imagine that this, what we've heard, is constructed, um, well, it's constructed, um, how to say, uh, is played by four voices. That's how I would put it in words. We have four different voices. We have a string quartet or we have four people. And now I show you every voice. Well, maybe a little bit again. I put it a little bit. So that we can, we can hear it. Okay. And we start from the, from the bass. Okay. So the bass, so the double bass, let's say, has this melody. Well, melody, accompaniment. Listen. It sounds a little bit like Edward Grieg, don't you think so? You know? You know this. <laughs> For example, right? The, um, uh, you know, the very famous Greek music. It sounds a little bit like um, Edvard Grieg's music. Now the second voice has something like this. And they play together and this both uh, voices they are played uh, by the left hand. Together it sounds like this. Right? And then we have another voice uh, the middle voice, uh, which is played by the right hand, it has broken octaves, and this is the melody that we actually hear. And to make this melody a little bit more difficult, and that's why you are here closer, I want to show you, Chopin puts another voice in the, the, the higher voice 
which in the middle of the hand, when we have these broken octaves, they are played with this finger and this finger, right this, like this. In the middle, Chopin thought, oh, we have still a few fingers which are doing nothing, so let's give them a job, you know, let's... <laughs> and they are, they are, they have to play one more voice. And in the first uh, musical period, um, it has this kind of voice. Together with octaves, it sounds like this. So these are four voices of this etude. And yeah, not easy, right? Not easy. But trust me, if you use the wrist, uh, it becomes much it becomes much more easy to play. Just this this is the secret. Anyway, four voices. And they are having fun. And you know, one more thing, um, because this first musical period is going to be repeated again for the second time, just after the first part. So it will appear two times. And the second time Chopin is even more wicked, because this uh, upper voice has to play four notes. middle of the octaves, let's look. So this is also difficult. It's a little bit more difficult than the beginning because we need to have faster fingers. And everything happens in the middle of uh, the hand, right? So very tricky and fantastically written to improve the hand, to improve the technique. Okay, so now let's see how exactly it sounds. Uh, I play for you part A. And now we have the first phrase. And then everything is repeated. first phrase. Then we have the second phrase. And the second phrase, of course, still is using the same four voices um, technique, the same uh, way of playing, everything is the same, just the melody is different. Um, and here, this part is a very innovative part it, from the harmonic point of view. Uh, just the way how Chopin is constructing chords uh, is very special, very brave for that time. Um, but first let's listen to part B, to the phrase number two, well, to melody number two, part B. <laughs> something um, incredible but we talk about it soon before I want to present for you this dissonances that we have here so what I'm going to do I'm going to play it much slower uh, when I play it much slower our ears will have time to absorb all these dissonances which together uh, are making this beauty let's listen Here, the first dissonance, once again.
Das ist schon fein. So, that's part B. And now, in, uh, once again, in uh, the tempo. Mm. part A. So we come back to part A. And so, so far we have A, B, A, but that's not the end of the etude. So listen to part A a little and we will compare it to the first appearance of this music. Mm. <laughs> the beginning. And the second time. If you have a good ear, you could hear that these are completely two different tonalities, of course. Uh, we start from a different note, but then everything is the same. But now I have to hear uh, say a few words about this specific and shocking harmony, because the whole etude is in F major. I know for, for note musicians it is going to be a little bit blurry, blurred what I'm talking about, but I try to do it as simple as possible. It's um, F major, as I said. And the F major is the key that has uh, only one flat. Um, so, you know, only one black key, let's call it like this. It's, it's simpler. And here, uh, this dissonant part B is modulating and it's bringing us, Chopin is taking us on a trip, on a very long trip, trip to, I don't know, to another planet, because we arrive to B major, B major key, and B major has five black keys and they are sharps. But now, so what I want to say for not musicians, it was not allowed, well, not maybe it's too much to say, but it was not common to put those two um, tonalities together in one piece of music and such a short piece of music. But now, what was Chopin's idea? Because you know, musicologists also, they are thinking, what, why B major here? We have F major, so we, we have to, you know, change completely everything, you know? Why? But it's actually very simple. Uh, you know, when we have in, the, in musical, music theory, in musical world, we have uh, the circle uh, of um, fifths, that's, you can Google it, you can read about it. When, and in this circle, we can go uh, using I mean, constructing the fifths. Fifths is the interval uh, from this note, we have to count five. One, two, three, four, five. And we have the fifth, that's the name. So if we travel we, every fifth, we have the tonality, which has one more black key, I call it, where one more flat or one more sharp. And okay, now let's count how long way we have to go uh, so that we reach B major, starting from F major. I will just build fifths. So, I start from F. The first one, first we will go by uh, adding sharps, so we go up. Okay, so first one, second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one, 
sixth one. So we are six fifths a away from F major. It's a very long way, very long. But now let's try maybe going down, it will be faster. So let's try going down. So we will add flats. Okay, so F. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. We arrived to B. Miracle. Both ways we have the same way. And this was Chopin's idea. This was Chopin's thinking. Chopin took the octave F and he cut it into half. And when he cut it into half, we uh, have this note. So that was just a short musical theory, more advanced uh, topic. Forgive me if it was too difficult for you. Now we go back to our uh, analysis. Um, but this is fantastic. So the, if you're not a musician, the only thing you should know is that when part A appears again, it is a completely different key that should not be here. And it sounds like this. And then we have the dissonant part B. This is fantastic. So it was not the end. We had A, B, A, and then B. So listen to the dissonant part B. And uh, part B will fall asleep at the end. <laughs> to stop and uh, tell you a little bit about my imagination. As you know, I try to avoid um, talking um, about some images um, which this music uh, shows us when I speak about etudes. I focus on difficulties, I focus on the structure, I focus on the music. In most cases, right? Um, but sometimes I can't help thinking about something. And when I play this etude, you know what I'm thinking about? I'm thinking about a little horse. A little horse, just newborn horse that learned how to uh, walk and how to jump and how to run. And this horse is just jumping from the very beginning. Patatai, 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 patatai. My father comes from the eastern part of Poland, close to the border with uh, with the Ukraine, actually, very close, uh, from a very, very small village. And I remember when I was a kid, we were going on vacation every year for one month, because my father was helping his parents with uh, all this work they had to do. You know, they were farmers. And this was the best time for the whole year for me. You know, imagine coming from the city to the small little village of farmers where my grandparents, they had cows, they had hens, they had pigs, they had um, horses as well. Um, and, and everything, it was so beautiful, so fantastic. So I remember very well how behaved little horse <laughs> And he was very naughty, but he just loved life, you know? So this attitude is about loving life, I think. And I can't help having this image inside myself. But why am I talking about it now? Because here especially is a very funny moment, which when I'm playing it, I'm trying to play it the way that the public, so all of you, should just laugh aloud. That's my goal. Because, as I told you, this little horse finally got tired and came and is, you know, tired and stopped falling asleep. And when we think that it's over, he is sleeping, suddenly 
he starts all over again and the most in the most crazy way that he can uh, because we will get back to part a for the last time in the key of f major so in the same key that we had before and it was it will be crazy so just listen first the modulating part b uh, dissonant part b and then falling asleep and then suddenly oh, surprise say the coda starts so one more technical thing which I wanted to show you here when I have forte and when I play this last time part a just observe my elbow because it's the elbow who is making this melody Chopin is asking us to have an accent on this melody and to make these accents we 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 cannot only use only the finger. We must also use the elbow. And so just observe my elbow. Okay, and now the most difficult part because here the left hand, look, has a very wide jump. That's quite uncomfortable. But also the wrist helps. So let's listen to the coda. Appears into the thin air at the end. Listen, listen. Yes, just disappears, disappears, disappears. So that's that's it. This etude is, as I said, constructed uh, with only one motif, very small but four voices motif. It's very happy, very bright, very light. We are using the wrist, and it contains two different parts. Part A. Uh, which is always the same but has two different tonalities and part b which is changing this uh, musical world right uh, and is very dissonant let's listen one more time part a phrase number one consequent phrase with faster notes in the middle of the hand. Dissonant part B.
that's the end. Thank you very much and see you again in my next episodes. Bye bye.